Given that economics is all about the way that we use resources, the concept of efficiency becomes really important. And uh, there are a number of different efficiency concepts within the study of economics. The ones that we need to think about uh, that when we're thinking about business economics basically divide down into two major groups. So we have what are called the static efficiencies and then we have dynamic efficiency. Now, static efficiency is, uh, is binary efficiency. So either you are statically efficient or you are not. There's no kind of in-between stage. Um, dynamic efficiency is slightly different. Dynamic efficiency is changing efficiencies over time. So, so that's, um, that, that, that's a bit more of, a, of an open-ended concept. Now, dynamic efficiency you just really consider by itself. But within static efficiency, there are three particular types of static efficiency which are relevant in business economics. The first of these is productive efficiency. And productive efficiency is when we are producing at the lowest possible level of average cost. So it's, uh, it's when a business is producing its product as efficiently as possible. By that we mean at the lowest cost possible. Another option for static efficiency is allocative efficiency. Now, when we think about allocative efficiency, we're not really thinking about each individual firm, or at least what we're aiming for here is that uh, the concept that if all of the firms within an economy are allocatively efficient, then overall the uh, welfare of consumers will be maximised. The, the allocative refers to the way in which the resources are allocated between products. So what we're thinking about here really is, is the uh, industry producing the amount of products which maximise consumer welfare? So what we're saying is the output level to maximise welfare. The third type of static efficiency, if we move these up a little bit, is what's known as X efficiency. And uh, this is a concept that, uh, that we normally talk about actually just in terms of the inefficiency rather than the efficiency of it. But X efficiency means that the firms are striving to reach lowest cost. Now, it's slightly different to productive, although the, the definitions sound relatively similar. Um, we'll, we'll see later on that, that that's not actually the case, because productive efficiency is about achieving a particular level of output, and X efficiency is about achieving the lowest possible level of cost given a particular level of output. So uh, there, there, there's it's ever so slightly different in, in the way that, uh, that we deal with them. So uh, four types of efficiency overall then that we need to consider. So we've got three static efficiencies, productive efficiency, allocative efficiency, and X efficiency. Those are all our static efficiencies. And then we also have dynamic efficiency, which is improved efficiency over time. So what we're going to do in the rest of this video then is we're going to go through each of these and importantly look at how we would demonstrate each of these on a uh, di diagram demonstrating a firm. So we're going to start with our basic theory of the firm diagram. So here is our uh, diagram of a firm. Uh, this is a firm in an imperfect market uh, and uh, we're showing one here where there, uh, there is a degree of supernormal profit. Um, the, the way that you draw the diagram does have an impact on the, uh, the efficiencies, but I will deal with that in a separate video on specifically how the efficiencies differ in different markets. Um, the important thing to think about here, though, is the impact of the different efficiencies that we have. So if we remember, we have productive, we have allocative, we have X, and we have dynamic efficiencies. That we, uh, that we need to think about here. So the productive efficiency, if you remember the productive efficiency is where the firm is producing at the output level where average cost is minimized. So 
The important curve that we're looking for here is the average cost curve. And what we're saying is that to be productively efficient, the firm must be at the lowest point of the AC curve. So as we track AC along here, at its lowest point, that is the point where it is productively efficient. And we know that this coincides with another point here. This isn't just a chance that the MC curve is going through it at its lowest point. That's actually a, a, a uh, mathematics, a rule of mathematics dictates that it must. So the point of productive efficiency is always where MC is a equal to AC because where MC and AC are equal, that is always the point where AC is at its lowest point. So QP there represents the point of productive efficiency. If this firm chooses to produce output level QP, we can say that it is productively efficient. If it produces anywhere other than QP, then it is not. Allocative efficiency, remember what we said, was all about uh, maximizing the level of welfare, i.e. producing the amount of the good that, uh, that consumers actually want. So what we need to think about here is essentially the point where the cost of producing a unit for the firm is exactly the same as the price that the consumers pay. When that's the case, then we know that we have reached that output level where uh, the, the welfare is being maximized. So the cost of producing the unit is the marginal cost for the firm, and the price which uh, the consumers pay, remember the price is always derived from the average revenue, the demand line, so when we're thinking about the allocative efficient level of output, it's where the MC is equal to the average revenue. So that on our firm here is this output level. So if we bring this one down, then we can say that QA is our allocatively efficient level of output. And again, it's a binary thing. If the firm is at QA, if it's producing the amount of, of output QA, then it is allocatively efficient. If it's anywhere else, then it is not. And again, the way to think about allocative efficiency is if all firms were allocatively efficient, this would mean that resources were allocated across the whole economy in a way that maximized consumer welfare. Now, we said X uh, efficiency was all about striving for the lowest level of cost. Um, we said that QP is the point of productive efficiency, but equally, it's the average cost curve here is showing us the lowest possible level of average cost at each level of output. And it's entirely possible that actually a firm may not necessarily be producing at the very lowest level of cost for any given output level. So X inefficiency would be a circumstance where for any particular firm, the actual level of uh, average cost would be above the average cost curve. So, uh, for instance, if we were producing, let's just pick an arbitrary point here, which we'll just call Q1. So if my firm is producing Q1, then this level of cost, which we can call C1, that is the lowest level of average cost uh, which that firm can produce in. But it's possible, actually, that the firm may possibly produce with a level of average cost which is higher. In other words, it is not striving to get down onto this line uh, to generate the lowest possible level of average cost. And that's, uh, that's what we would call X inefficiency. So if we are X efficient and we assume that a firm is, unless we're told otherwise, then, uh, then that means that it is producing on its average cost curve. It's producing at the lowest level of cost which it can. Dynamic efficiency, then, is slightly di different. Dynamic efficiency, as we said, is changes over time. So dynamic efficiency is shown as a reduction in uh, average cost over time. So uh, what that would mean, then, is that the average cost curve uh, would be moving down, you often show it moving down to the right um, over, over time. Uh, you would also normally do this, because it's over time, you would normally do this with the long run average cost curve. So you wouldn't normally show it on a diagram like this. You would show it on the long run average cost curve, as we'll just draw quickly now. So when we're drawing a long run average cost curve like this, which uh, we often draw with a kind of a, a flat bottom here to, to indicate the long run nature of it and just to differentiate it from our short run curve. Uh, when we're drawing a long run average cost curve, we would show dynamic efficiency by a movement 
down and to the right of the original cost curve. So a movement from LRAC1 to LRAC2 would be the way that you would demonstrate dynamic efficiency within an economy. So a uh, quick recap then on, uh, on this video. We've got uh, four different types of efficiency. We've got productive, allocative, X efficiency and dynamic efficiency. Productive efficiency we show on a diagram where MC is equal to AC, AC beg your pardon, where MC is equal to AC. Allocative is where MC is equal to AR. X means on the AC curve rather than some point above it. And dynamic is shown as long run AC shifting to the right. So those are the four different types of efficiencies which are relevant in the business economics section of the course.